Welcome to another episode of Just One More Fix. This is James. With me in this review is Kurt and Lacey. Hello. You can find us online at justonemorefix.com or on Twitter at Just One More Fix. If you like us, head over to iTunes or to Google Play and give us a rating and a comment. In this review, we are going to review Dread. And now, it's time to get a review fix. Alright, so welcome to another review. Obviously you heard we're going to review Dread today. So Dread is a horror RPG, uh, an indie RPG. Um, it is produced by <laughs> a, a company. company. <laughs> do, 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 do. Well, we're going to tell you shortly. So the game is from The Impossible Dream, and it was written by, I'm going to butcher this name, sorry, Epidia Ravichol and Nat Barmore. Uh, the one we have is the seventh printing, it says, so I don't know if, who was, if there was any changes to that when it was first came out for the very first time. But the book is uh, very cool. It's uh, a horror game. It uses the mechanic is a Jenga tower, and anytime you do something that would have a high probability or a chance of failure, you pull a Jenga block. If you successfully pull the Jenga block, you do it. If you don't successfully pull the Jenga block, you die. Things. You die. Yeah, bad things, things happen. If the tower falls, you die. Yeah. You can't. Um, there is a mechanic that allows you to abandon a pool. So if tower falling is imminent and you would like not to die, then you can uh, abandon that decision and choose to fail at that specific task. Right. So that is in there too. Right. So that's that's the basic mechanic of it. And if something is significantly different, difficult, then you might have to do two pulls or three pulls. Oh, so God. based on parts of the task. Right. Yeah. So then the 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 cool thing about it is the intensity that builds with Jenga. As you pull more blocks, it gets harder and harder to yeah. to to keep going. More risk, you know, more mm. more anticipation. It really suits the horror genre very well. So that yeah, that builds suspense in a in a very natural way with the mechanic. Right. So that's the basic mechanic for for dread. It's um, most people have seen it by now. It's been out for for a while now. Um, as I said, it's in its seventh printing apparently. The book itself is very uh, stark. It actually is it's pretty eye grabbing. When I it's remember, one of the only RPG books I've seen that is mostly white. Yeah, so when, it's white. It's got just um, black typecast letters on the front that say "Dread," and then there is basically like a, a bloody, yeah, a bloody <laughs> thumbprint on the. Cover. Well, I remember at Gen Con the first time I saw it, it was on the shelf at the Indie Press booth, and I was like, "Wow, what is that? like?" It's so stark compared to all the grand artwork on a lot of the covers. It just it really stands out. Yeah. Now I would say for most games, this would be a terrible cover. But for this game, <laughs> it is so fitting. It's like perfect. It's like one of those things that like it's the perfect design for for this game. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of thought that went into it, and um, that's just one of the things that, that I love about this game is um, just the look of it, um, the mechanic for it, all of it, um, character creation within the game suits the game very well. It's well. like like I said with the cover, it's so brutally simple and elegant in that there is no there's nothing extra almost everything that's there like if you took any piece of it out it wouldn't it wouldn't be it anymore which i feel like is inherent in a good horror story I, exactly yes very you much. know mm. simple yet elegant right it does it does lend itself to a lot of night now my first experience with this was at gen con when we played uh, it was the a group gremlins of us. game was it yeah, gremlins? So, was a gremlins, it was gremlins game. So, yeah so normally the game is a horror game and Kurt, the game kurt is talking about we played for the, like the from the 80s the gremlins game and it was a more of a it's, comedy it's horror, horror game almost yeah it's horror comedy right and um, it and it, it, it suited like the movie <laughs> i thought it suited the game very well i had a it great did. time yeah. it was a lot of fun now it was um it was a shorter one shot so it was a little different in that um they changed the mechanic subtly so that if the tower fell um that dictated the end of the game right. as opposed to individual um, characters. individual yeah. character death right. now i think that it's 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 very good at this but it's it's greatest asset is also its greatest problem I would agree entirely. The Jenga Tower is amazing for building the suspense <laughs> um, for character death, mm -hmm. but the momentum that you lose in resetting up the Jenga Tower is almost as substantial. So I thought about this because we talked about it the other day. Yeah. And I have a solution a second Jenga Tower. <laughs> But then, do you have you one still for have every to reset character? It. Do you have to well, do you have to move to another table? No, 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 no. no because once that? it falls over, you How just do you scrape the blocks the one off. One tower isn't. Gonna... And then you've got the other one set and ready to go. You set it down. 
let oh it go. Oh my gosh! And what if every player had to have their own tower? No, but then then whoever died, they can they can build the tower. And they listen rebuild to the story. their tower. Right. That was my okay, initial solution. But. It's a fix. I, I still feel yeah. like it. You know, it remains a little bit of a problem that you lose the momentum with. Right. Um, and it, it does address kind of losing a little bit of momentum just in the act of having to stop the story for people to pull blocks um, right. in the first place. But that's um, yeah, I would agree. That's my biggest problem with the game that I haven't entirely wrapped my head around how to overcome. Right. And I don't know if it's that you know as. Um, they don't call it a, a GM in this. I forget what they call it. But th the person running your game, basically, um, if they need to do more narration while somebody else is setting the tower back up or, um, you know, what exactly needs to happen to make that more seamless. The game itself, is, or the book itself, I guess, is about 170 pages. It's all black and white. We kind of described the color cover to you. And really, the last third of it is, is um, settings, examples yeah. uh, of games that you can run. It right. has... Um, I, th I think three um, like pre prefabbed games that you can look right. through. What's interesting I found about it is this: we basically have described to you the fundamentals of the way the system works. So the book doesn't focus on mechanics very much because it's very it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Right? It talks about aspects specifically of horror yes. um, and ways you can incorporate that into your game. The other thing it spends a lot of time on is character creation. And character creation for a Dread game is very different um, than it is for a lot of games that other people have played. Yeah, there's no stats. You fill out a questionnaire. So the questionnaire is prepared beforehand, generally. And it is not um, a pre, pre-made pre questionnaire that is See, within the book. I didn't know that. It yeah. is d designed by the person running the game individually for that game. So yeah, this is a game where you're going to tell a specific horror story. Because I feel like, as far as telling true horror stories, this is the game that sets you up the best to do it. Because even if you are never going to run a Dread game, this game will make you understand running horror RPGs in a way different way than any other horror game will. I learned a lot about c c scenario design and building tension and things to think about with characters. And yeah, there's some really good um, character creation tips in this just mm -hmm. for, for any game. Yeah. Because um, it talks a lot about bringing in um, aspects of the character and asking um, your players questions um, that bring in things that they, they hope, things that they fear. Okay. Um, it, it basically forces them to write down character motivations and drawbacks. Um, so that is built into the character questionnaire so that you have those things. And I think like uh, uh, most good role players, when they make a character, they have those things in mind. But I think that there's something different that happens between having it in mind and, and bringing it to life by writing it down. It forces the narrative structure to the fore because there are no statistics. Mm -hmm. Well, and it makes it accessible to the person that's running your game. So I can know everything there is to know about my character, but if the person running the game doesn't have access to those... Um, little quirks that I've that I've built in then they may not know how to motivate my character they may not know what I'm mm. looking for in that game um, you know when I say your character has some kind of physical disorder what is it um, you know and how does that affect you now you, that's actually my question and you've written it down and I I know and mm. it also um takes some of the burden in a certain way off of the person running the game too because now you're creating problems that I can use um, kind of against your hooks. character in yeah. the game. Yeah, yeah, you're creating hooks yeah. for me to use within the game. So it's it's great it's great strength again is its great weakness. It's good for one thing. I, I would agree. Oh yeah, yeah it's I very think, specific. Yeah, it's it's only for a game. For, now I would recommend game. reading it just to run yes, better no, games in general, yeah. but yes, if you're looking to run a game with it, it is um, yeah, it's it, very is purpose built. it is purpose it is, built. It is purpose it's built. It's great. I have to say, the couple times that we, I've only times I played it have been one shots. And if you're going to run a one shot horror game, it's the way to go because your character is going to die. I think I mean, maybe, maybe if you were really stretching it, you could get like two sessions out of it, maybe. Right. Um, it's but not a long-term Yeah, it would, it would have to be yeah. with the understanding that everyone that started out in the first session may not be present in the second <laughs> session. <laughs> so. yeah. Stay home Tuesday. You don't need to be <laughs> right. here. Trust yeah. me. Yeah. So um, no. the other the other thing that I think is cool about it that I just wanted to point out is the entire book on every single page along the bottom, yeah. there are 
interesting questions throughout the entire book, just a, a single running line of questions along the bottom that you mm-hmm. can pull from. Yeah, so like here, despite your new lifestyle, what guilty pleasure from your past do you still allow yourself? I would turn to that one. Uh, <laughs> what one thing do you hope your boss never finds out about you? Why haven't you spoken to your mother in five years despite the fact that she leaves you a message nearly every night? So even if you don't use these specific questions for the characters, they're great things to, to provoke thought about what you want in your game. Even if you're just flipping through it and you're like, oh, man, that's a great motivation for somebody. You know, and like Lacey said, the the character questionnaires are specific to each individual character. So not everybody gets the same questionnaire. You don't get the same generic, who are you? What do you do for a living? What do you fear? What do you love? It's, and, and this it's is, purpose I think, built. especially important for this game also because, like you said, it's very specific for kind of the one-shot horror game. And when you're running that, there are certain characters that you need to make your storyline make sense. So instead of saying, I need you guys to make, uh, you know, a paladin so somebody has the ability <laughs> to get I need somebody to be a cop, please. You're building that into the questionnaire. You're saying... Uh, when did you first realize that you could read somebody's mind? Right. Ha, um, oh my goodness, there's a psychic. How about set, that? Setting expectations done. How right. did things go terribly wrong the first time you turned into a werewolf? Right. You know, I'm not telling you you need to make <laughs> a werewolf. I'm telling you, you, you are, are a werewolf. A werewolf. Yeah. Tell, tell me about that. Yeah, you know okay. what I mean? So what right. I need in the story, I'm building into that question. Well, I think if you think of like Cabin in the Woods, if you've seen that movie, there are certain archetypes that exist in horror movies. You know, the... Well, I think it was the the nerd, the jock, the virgin, the stoner, and something else. Yeah, those yeah. are the big ones. Right, but that like it it sets you up to play on those tropes and to make a horror game or a horror story, you know, a horror movie kind of a thing, and that's that's what it does, you know. And like like you guys said, it it's its greatest strength is also in a way its greatest weakness, but it does it so well. And that's as far just as it. Horror now, games. I can tell you right now, coming from an old school gamer sort of perspective. It took a minute to get into it because it's not what you think it is. And so when you go and play this, it almost so might let be me, worth... Let me ask you, what did you think it was? I don't know because I remembered playing it at a foggy memory of going to Games On Demand, but we played so many games. <laughs> it all blurred. There's this like dice haze in my head. Right. But it's critical that you go into it with the notion that you know this is a horror setting and this is how it works. It might almost be... I mean... I certainly would have um, probably benefited from having either read a summary of how it works because I had no clue. I had a little trouble generating character in the beginning. There's a couple of things about it that are different than even a lot of the other indie press games that we've reviewed. This one is very much more a storytelling game than some of the other ones that we've done so the the system um is like just designed you know succeed or fail on these tasks that are difficult but it's it's much more cooperative storytelling than Mm -hmm. some of the other games we've talked about and that can be a big leap for people that are used to just having the person narrate the story and then this is where i'm going to decide okay what what is your character going to do and in this game your players are telling the story and it and, and it says in your book you are in the back seat for this your job is to just you know create the dynamic with the npcs and be a rules arbiter and that's it like right. this is for your players to tell the story and you're giving them setting so it's a much more of a group it's much more group storytelling group than, than right. um maybe what a lot of people are used to okay yeah, so if, if we do this again I am absolutely much more prepared right. to make it a better experience. I wasn't trying to sabotage it, but at the same time, I think it took me about 15, 20 minutes to figure out what I was doing and what my role was supposed to be um, so that when I died, I could make it I, you know, I could make it really, really, you know, help move the plot along. Right, right. We focused on what it does very well, obviously horror, that builds attention with the Jenga Tower, all that kind of stuff. Who do you guys think this game is for? I think um, if you've never played an RPG in your life, but you love horror, Mm -hmm. this game is for you. I think this is a great entry entry game to teach people RPGs, basically, because you get some of the role playing. You know, not even some. You get the role playing. Just say it's all RP. (laughs) But but everybody understands Jenga, and even if you've never seen it before, here you go. 
This is a tower. Well, Don't knock it over. Pull a block out. Put it on top. If Ta-da! you've never done gaming before, <laughs> but um, like your theater kids, yeah, um, yeah, people that are good at improv, uh-huh. people that are good at being a character and and acting that character out, but maybe have never done role playing gaming before. Um, I will tell you who this game also. is not for. Who that pound on the table. <laughs> what? Because the Jenga tower. Oh yes. Yeah. Okay, if you get like, animated and act, and you slam something, yeah, 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 not for you. Done. If you are easily overexcited. No. Right. If you're if you're looking for an epic sort of long term campaign, this isn't necessarily for you. But if you want to be able to tell that story in an urgent manner, is that a term I could I right. can I, yeah. I can use? This is it. I mean, I also yeah. think it's something a uh, cool idea because it is designed to be a one shot. That if you just had your questionnaires already prepared and ready to go, because you had the story, this horror story you want to tell, you could have this ready to go and just sitting and waiting. And then you have that off night, somebody doesn't show up, whatever. Hey, I've got this dread game we can just, you know, bust out and have a good time with, you know, and it can just sit forever, essentially, you know. Yeah, and it's like it's like ghost peppers, though. You can't, you couldn't eat it every night. No, no, yeah. no, no. no and as far as who this game is not for, if you're someone who does not like horror, if you do not like those intense moments, th- this game is designed so that someone is going to be pushing your buttons. Yeah. They, they are going to be finding those things that make you uncomfortable and dwelling on them. Right. Uh, so <laughs> if you are not down for that, and not everyone is, no. um, then this game is, but that's, is not that's for you. That's fundamentally what horror is. A horror is a about right. but, those you know, uncomfortable areas. If, if someone is going into it and maybe expecting, you know, maybe I've done a horror game, but it's been a little bit lighter horror. Right. I mean, you can certainly do that with this, but... Um, Don't go into Dread expecting... Right, Call Mouse Cthulhu Cthulhu or Mouse <laughs> oh, Yeah, no, you, you're going to be facing some, some really heavy, um, you know, emotionally impactful right. things. Right, right. At the same time, though, depending on what game you want to run, we talked about that Gremlins game we played in, basically, and that was a very fun and sort of lighthearted game. I think... Several, some people died or whatever, but you know it was still a, a pretty light. <laughs> well, we also game. did the, the the GM who was running the judge or whoever it was was running it was not prepared for the Saturday night gaming group because all five or six of us had yeah. been playing together for years. We sat down; it was seamless. I also have ridiculous Jenga hands, and so it, the, and the 20, tower didn't 27 fall. Twenty-seven pulls later, yeah, it was still standing. So, <laughs> and um, again, this this game is cool because of the specificity of the character survey. So, if you know you know your players well, I know James is wicked good at Jenga. So, I built a disability <laughs> into his character with that survey. Yeah, that's yeah, <laughs> all good. Nice all right. done, Ron. So, I think that about covers it, right? Is there anything else we want to say about Dread? No, I think that's pretty much it. So, I I almost um I think have a maybe a bit skewed opinion of it because I do love horror right. so much oh, yeah. that I do too. <laughs> this is probably one of my favorite games. So we like this game, yes or no? Most we, definitely. We love it for horror, yes. I would do. give it more than two thumbs up if I had more than two thumbs up. Then it, it would is be a horror. horror game. You, I'm gonna you chop, yeah, you could. I'm gonna yeah. chop someone else's thumb off so I can give it three thumbs up. Right on so <laughs> dread, go check it out. Uh, awesome game. But don't chop any thumbs off. Today. Thanks for listening. This has been another episode of Just One More Fix. Music has been provided by Kevin McLeod. You can find him at incompetech.com. You can find us at justonemorefix.com. And follow us on Twitter at justonemorefix.com.